evening, everyone. We're going to start this evening right now with the presentation uh, to the mothers of Rose. Changed some of our plans, and somebody walked off with a key. They were supposed to already be in the back there. So. off when you run over there. <laughs> Just don't slip. What? Oh, I fell in. What the? Oh. Hang on to the camera. I should probably watch for her.
Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Can everyone hear me okay? We're gathered here today not to witness the beginning of what will be, but rather what already is. We do not create this marriage because we cannot. We can and do, however, celebrate with Timothy and Dawn and their families and friends the wondrous and joyful occurrence that has already taken place in their lives. Marriage is a supreme sharing of experience and an adventure in the most intimate of human relationships. It is the joyous union of two people whose friendship and mutual understanding have blossomed into romance. Today, Timothy and Dawn proclaim their love and commitment to the world, and we gather here to rejoice with and for them in the new life they now undertake together. Let's bow our heads for a short prayer. Our Father, we rejoice with Timothy and Dawn. We thank you for the families and their friends who have helped to shape their lives. We thank you for the opportunities and events that challenge them to their life's work. We thank you for their ever-deepening relationship and their decision to share the future together. We pray that we may be responsible witnesses to them, enabling them to share their lives for the sake of all people. Amen. Marriage requires love, a word we often use with vagueness and sentimentality. We may assume that love is some rare and mystical event, when in fact it is our natural state of being. So what do we mean by love? When we love, we see the things other people do not see. We see the inner qualities that make our beloved one special and unique. To be loved is to be seen and known as we are known to no other. One who loves us gives us a unique gift, a piece of ourselves, but a piece that only they can give us. Marriage is to belong to each other through a unique and diverse collaboration, like two threads crossing in different directions, yet weaving one tapestry together. To make this relationship work, therefore, takes more than love. It takes trust to know in your hearts that you only want the best for one another. <clears throat> it takes dedication to stay open to one another, to learn and grow, even when it is difficult to do so. And it takes faith to go forward together without knowing what the future holds for you both. While love is our natural state of being, these other qualities are not as easy to come by. They are not a destination, but a journey. I'd like to read a short poem. It was written hundreds of years ago in an English translation. It reads, you and I have so much love that it burns like a fire, in which we bake a lump of clay, mold it into a figure of you and a figure of me. Then we take both of them and break them into pieces and mix the pieces with water and mold again a figure of you and a figure of me. I am in your clay. You are in my clay. In life we share a single quilt. In death we will share one coffin. As the poem shows us, mingling in marriage is a mutual dedication, a cooperative venture in every sense. <clears throat> it is a relationship based on love, respect, and determination by both partners to adjust to each other and support one another in health and in sickness, in joy and in sadness, in ease and in hardship. Timothy and Dawn, this celebration is the outward token of your sacred and inward union of hearts, which the church and temple may bless and the state make legal, but which neither state nor church can create nor no. It is a union created by your loving purpose and kept by your abiding will. It is in this spirit and for this purpose that you have come here to be joined together today. 
Timothy, will you take Dawn to be your wedded wife, to live together in marriage? Will you love her, comfort her, and honor her in sickness and in health, in sorrow and in joy, so long as you both shall live? And Dawn, will you take Timothy to be your wedded husband, to live together in marriage? Will you love him, comfort him, and honor him in sickness and in health, in sorrow and in joy, so long as you both shall live? Traditionally, the marking of the passage to status of husband and wife is marked by the exchange of rings. These rings are a symbol of the unbroken circle of love. Love freely given has no beginning and no end, no giver and no receiver, for each is the giver and each is the receiver. May these rings always remind you of the vows you have taken. Timothy, place the ring on Dawn's finger and repeat after me, please. With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. And I pledge my love to you. And I pledge my love to you. Dawn, please take this ring, place on Timothy's finger, and repeat after me. With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. And I pledge my love to you. <clears throat> Go into the world and fulfill your lives. Hold fast to your ideals and give one another new experiences of joy. <clears throat> Challenge one another so that you might grow together. May this love now sealed with your mutual covenant mature and enrich the experience of you both. May your home be a happy one and your lives fulfilled. <clears throat> Being assured... And as much as you have consented together in this ceremony to live in wedlock and have sealed your vows in the presence of this company and by the giving of the rings, it gives me great pleasure to pronounce that you are husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Timothy Donnelly. <laughs> 